Um, we have not had a permaculture presentation. You know, we've had a lot of different things, a lot of different topics, and this is something we've always pretty much wanted to do, but it seemed to me that it was mostly being done in Austin. You know, so it's um, wonderful to have, uh, on a personal note, Dodrick here and uh, Adana to, to have this presentation. So um, welcome very much. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm Dr. Evans, and I'm a permaculture teacher here in San Antonio. Uh, Donna McCarthy, we're both uh, in a meetup group for our community gardens, so we're working together on the presentation today. Um, today we're going to talk about permaculture, the holistic paths towards uh, sustainability. Uh, we press the, the next slide, please. Thanks. Now, the word permaculture was coined back in 1978 by Bill Mollison and his student, David Hungry. Um, they worked together a number of years, not only looking at basic uh, agriculture and horticulture, but they also looked at develop developing communities that would be sustainable over a long period of time. So they took the words permanent agriculture and the word permanent culture to um, up with the word permaculture. Um, the whole idea behind the permit is if you develop an ecological system or an ecological community uh, in, the, in the right way, based on nature, it should be there long after you're gone. Uh, the oldest permaculture site that I've ever been to was about 2,000 years old. Uh, about 10 years ago, I went to Morocco, and we were out there in the high desert near, near the Sahara. And sure enough, they're living out there. They've got an oasis that was designed over 10,000 years, not 10,000, but over 2,000 years ago, and is still functional based on the patterns of nature. So when we look at permaculture, we're looking at observing nature and developing systems so that humans, animals, and nature can coincide based on those natural pattern, patterns of nature. Okay, next slide, please. Um, the permaculture ethics and principles, they're there's what's called a permaculture flower, you'll see it on the slide. And that's um, what we use as our guiding principles to define permaculture. And as, a, as we said before, permaculture is a very specific thing, and there are very specific things about it. So if we go to the next slide um, and continue on through the ethics. Um, first ethics is care of the earth, um, rebuilt natural capital. So in terms of caring for the earth, there are are systems in place that are, are naturally occurring. And what permaculture is doing is looking at nature to define and to guide our principles of development and our principles of utilizing um, the, our resources on the planet. So on the planet, you know, our capital is everything from natural materials to food to human capital to all different aspects. And so by caring for that, then we are being good stewards of the planet. Next slide, please. One of the biggest things in this slide is talking about the health of the soil. Um, without caring for the soil, we essentially have no means of feeding ourselves and um, living as a sustainable culture as human beings on the planet. So in terms of uh, caring for the earth and caring for the soil, we're taking into account all the different types of resource capital, but the soil being the humus, the thing that which everything grows, that's what we're paying attention to. And by starting there, starting where everything comes out of and grows out of, then we can um, care for the earth and move forward. Next slide. Okay, the next slide would be care for people. And if you notice, um, in the, the drawing there, we have two people. This represents, this icon represents our need for companionship and our need to uh, work together in order to live harmoniously. So um, it starts off by looking out for yourself and looking out for those that are nearest you, as well as looking out for your community. Um, next slide, slide, please. So uh, when we're looking at work, working in a community, um, permaculture, when people look at permaculture, they think it's just about how to grow plants and food organically. That's true. But the culture part of that is once you've grown all this food and you have a bounty, what do you do with it? So um, in permaculture, we like to share our food with you know our neighbors, and also you know there's a there's a local economy uh, that we can maintain 
by buying from our neighbors and supporting our local economy. So not only sharing with your neighbors, but supporting your neighbors and whatever their endeavors are. Uh, next slide, please. Now, fair share. Um, basically, uh, as you can see the next uh, icon, there's a piece of the pie. Um, everyone uh, should be able to receive a fair share of whatever they put their work into. So we're, we're looking at limiting our consumption, our reproduction, and our uh, and redistribute the, the, the surplus. When you look at some of the, the biggest problems that we have going on in the world, it, it stems from overpopulation uh, in some countries, and also in other countries uh, we have uh, a steady population or, or zero growth in population, but we have overconsumption. As a result, subcultures suffer while uh, others prosper. So we're looking at distributing, you know, our our, our uh, resources in a responsible manner and managing our cons consumption. Next slide, please. Um, the other thing that's taking into account is once we actually start designing permaculture uh, areas, uh, we will have surplus, uh, in, especially in terms of food. So one of the things that we take into account is to, once you have, once you start growing in a community garden, for example, you know, you start producing a certain crop, and then all of a sudden it's way more than any one person or any one family can, can eat, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. So one of the things to do is just, you know, pass it on to your neighbor. Your neighbor's growing something in their backyard, they pass it on to you, and then all of a sudden you have a barter economy where everyone is able to, you know, live and have a little piece of the pie. You know, make some jam, make some pie, you know, make it a really great community experience because have, allowing and considering for other people to have their fair share is one of the things to build community as well as to build ourselves. Does that mean fair share for like also like bugs or for the earth as well? I mean, absolutely. Like some of the stuff could be more Absolutely. Sure. That's why we compost, um, which is an integral piece to you know any kind of sustainable gardening is making sure that you're not over tilling, over utilizing the soil and what you grow. Um, that's why it's more about smaller sustainable farms that you know a group, a small group of people can take care of without you know lots of heavy machinery and pushing cows and chickens through weird processes, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But, um, but yes, it is about sharing with both ourselves as human beings, but also with the planet, because that's where we live. And if we're not taking care of that and taking account of the resources, then we're left with nothing. No one gets what they want. Next slide, please. So there are several permaculture principles, and we'll go through that. I'll let Dottie take the next one. So in the center we have uh, the, uh, oh, if you could go back to the previous one. Yes, yeah, so in the center we have our, our, our ethics. Uh, that, that's basically what drives us. And on the outside we have a number of different icons. Each icon represents principles. And you notice the uh, clockwise motion of, of these principles? Well, generally speaking, as we um, look at each one of those principles, they're all interconnected and they all tie into each other. So if you could go to the next slide, please, uh, Stephen. Uh, the first uh, principle would be observe and interact. Uh, when we look at permaculture design, and whether you be uh, designing your, your home or, or your, your, your yard in a permaculture way, or, or if you're designing a business, because permaculture can also be applied towards business, the first thing to do is uh, basically observe uh, the environment that, that you're planning to design in. Uh, so the first step in permaculture would be to Observe. The next one, please, if you could go to the next slide, okay. Uh, the next one would be looking at uh, caching and 